started building the village breeder, like the exterior, but we had so many villagers in our breeder, so I had to resort to some sneaky methods to get rid of them without the iron golem getting in the way. sounded awful listening to them die in the fire, but it was much better than trying to get rid of them and getting the golem all upset. I kept running into some problems where I couldn't get the first villager to move, then the second villager would get stuck. I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but I wasn't very good at it. And then sometimes they would pop out, like this guy, which was annoying. And then my gate would catch on fire because it was wood. All kinds of problems. getting tired of murdering villagers through the minecart trick, so I decided to grab a bucket of lava and try that. I hadn't tried it initially because I was afraid I'd accidentally hit one of the villagers and then the golem would come after me, but I was so frustrated at this point. I mean, the minecart worked, it was just very time consuming. So we'll see if this bucket of lava, plus I have some of those that escaped, so I have to do this anyway. I started uh, by filling in kind of the bottom here and um, trying to make it look a little nice, a little rustic looking with the lanterns and the spruce logs. But I kind of enclosed the bottom here. I didn't want to close it completely. I want to be able to access it in case we need to do anything to the breeder to fix it or make it better or whatever. I wanted to be able to access everything. So I'm making kind of like um, a hallway around the whole bottom, the whole perimeter. And I'll put an outside wall and um, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I'm using a lot of cobble at this point to kind of mark off my oops, mark off my exterior wall. Um, I'll probably change that as I go, but I've got plenty of cobblestone. I figure I might as well use it. It's a good starting point. The first floor or the basement level, whatever you want to call this, is mostly going to be cobblestone and stone. At least that's the plan for now. I don't know how much it's going to change. I have an idea kind of what I want to do, but I don't know if it's going to work out. This building is going to be kind of square, but since the breeder has the glass cage hanging off to the one side, it's going to be a little lopsided, so um, it's going to be hard to do. I'm going to leave space here so we can still put the beds down for the villagers. Right now we took them away because they were making too many villagers. We didn't need that many right away. 
this golem keeps kind of getting in my way. But working with this perimeter here and see how even I can make it. out how to put the staircase in here was kind of a nightmare. I think I changed this setup, I don't know, three or four times. And what I ended up with is okay, I guess, but it looks alright. I mean, stairs are tricky, I think, in Minecraft anyway. I spent, it all, my, spent all my time working on these stairs, trying to get them to curl around, and I tore all this down. So, yeah. Pretty exciting stuff. changed the exterior wall there a few times so I eventually came in here and was able to pull some of the cobblestone I had layered up. I don't know how many layers of cobblestone I ended up with and at least two that I didn't need so I had to pull all that off. And then I decided I wanted to make kind of an entrance on the left hand or the right hand side of the building which was close to the villager stalls so I decided to figure that out. But at least I kind of got the front there figured out. I added a little bit of the spruce wood to kind of you know, alleviate some of the boring grayness of all the cobblestone and stone brick. I was working on like the second floor here. Trying to add some decorative elements as I go. I mean, I change that up once in a while. It's not easy trying to make things look attractive when you're working with just pixelated blocks. I mean, it takes a lot of work. I don't know how many times I had to tear down parts of the building because I decided they weren't spaced appropriately. I like to have at least three blocks in between walls and uh, I didn't have enough so I have to shift everything here over just one block and that should do it. So try and move this spruce tower, spruce beam over and the cobblestone over. I, don't know, I just like having odd numbers in between um, the spruce logs I use, whether it's three blocks or five blocks. 
works out pretty good when you want to put in windows or doors. I think, anyway. Now I'm trying to use some of that tough material and some stone and um, andesite to add some different textures to the walls so it's not just straight up cobblestone even though I am still using some cobblestone um, but mostly I think tough regular stone and andesite Just add some more to the to the uh, build to have some of those different textures in there. But and then I end up breaking out a hole for the window anyway. So you know, <laughs> I guess I could have planned ahead better for that. I've kind of got the exterior of that little entryway. I want to break away some of the original wall so we can enter into the basement area where the actual breeder is. So I'll have to make that look nice. I like to use spruce logs and stuff to kind of frame out those entrance entranceways. I think it looks nice. So I got the main part of the uh, new entranceway finished for the most part. Um, now I have to start working on the second floor and the roof there. Um, I'm not going to have a full second floor up there above the entranceway, just kind of a roof, but we can still access it I think from that second floor. You can see where I'm finishing off the perimeter of the bottom here with the uh, repetition of spruce logs and stone bricks. Uh, I'm using spruce fence, fence posts right now. I want to hang lanterns, I think. Um, there I finished off the roof. Well, I started the roof. It's not quite finished off, but I like the uh, way the warped wood planks or the fungus planks look with the dark oak. And there is the entranceway into the main part of the breeder. Kind of finish that off a little bit to make it look nice. Added a narrow staircase to get up here to the second floor, and you can see the little little alcove kind of above the entranceway. I started some walls up here, made like a little decorative front here, and put some railings up with some trapdoors to make it look a little finished off. The staircase, this is what the staircase I came up with. There's a little bit of a blank area there that I'll probably plant something or put a tree there. These bees. They keep trying to get into this village breeder so desperately. So that one bee really likes this blue orchid, so I'm just going to keep it closer to his beehive and maybe he'll stay out of the village breeder. I don't want to get them trapped in the village breeder. I got the top side of the second floor done using the birch logs and spruce logs. Uh, you know, it's kind of boring right now. I'm slowly trying to add some decoration to give it some more interest. Depth. I mean, I've tore this apart. I don't know how many times in redoing it. I'm probably overthinking it big time. I'm not going to keep the logs like they are. I'm going to strip them. 
but I'm going to keep adding some decorative elements up here, some steps to kind of curve out the hard edges. Top and bottom. And I'll try to add some plants near the window for color. This one I think I'm going to use a step here and a flower pot, which I didn't bring any up with me, so I'm going to have to go down and get some flower pots. But I'm going to put a flower pot here with a little cute flower. I was using fence posts to hold the lanterns, but then I thought the chains looked really cool, so I had to make some chains. So I'm slowly trading out um, some of the fence posts for chains. There's a couple places where I actually kind of use both. So I don't know, maybe it's too much, but I think it looks nice. I finally got my flower pot. I'm going to put a cornflower in there. Can't, I like the way the roses look, the big tall ones, but I can't just use all red. to the point finally where I can start on the third floor and uh, hopefully get to the point where we're finishing up this humongous building. I mean it kind of had to be big. The village breeder itself was already large but it was such an eyesore so we really wanted to uh, pretty it up a bit so hopefully the end result will justify having such a huge structure. <laughs> kind of makes my barn which I thought was big look tiny. But now I've got a set of stairs going up to the third floor where I have kind of a little balcony on either side of the third floor room. Um, because I wasn't going to attempt to try and do a roof over that big structure, it would have been too lopsided. Um, but it's open to the second floor so you can see the village breeder and when we put the bed down you can see it. Um, and we can go the whole way down to the very first floor. I have stairs the whole way down. so. Now to get these guys out, we'll have to probably knock through the wall when we run the mine carts out, but that's gonna be easy. So I think we're gonna use the third floor for storing um, some of the villagers. Maybe the librarians, I don't know. But I put a little azalea tree there in that open space by the stairs, and I think that looks pretty good now. Slowly getting my way done here. Anyway, this is, we were thinking maybe trying to make this the librarian place. It would be a pain to get them up here, but once they're in a mine cart, we can make them go wherever we want, so. Oh, I didn't realize that was hanging over. Here's a look at the front from a more of a bird's eye view. Adding some decorative elements. I think it's a little bit too much spruce log. I think I might try stripping some of that just to kind of change up the texture a little bit, but I don't know. Let's give it a try. Yeah, see, I mean, that's a lot of wood. I mean, it's different textures of wood, but I mean, I added the stone up there, the stone wall pieces to kind of add some more depth to it. I think I'm going to add some more on the side there.
looks nicer. I mean, it's not just all brown on that side. This stone adds some nice texture. I don't know. I say texture a lot. <laughs> More depth, maybe? Let's try and strip some of the spruce log. Good, but I feel like it's still missing something. Still gotta do this side. Couldn't get the windows completely symmetrical because of the spacing. But I'm gonna add some flowers and some steps to even out the hard edges. I think that'll help. Some flower boxes down here. Maybe add some vines. I still gotta fix up the back here and do my um, chains and lanterns and stuff. I already added some flower boxes, but I'm not done. View. I added more. I added some vines, add some greenery on here because it was looking pretty stark with just the wood. Um, I'm gonna have to get some string so I can stop the vines from growing too much, which might become a problem. If we ever find some glowberries, I want to add them, take some of the vines away, maybe just use the glowberries. We haven't found any yet. back here. I think the green definitely helps, but yeah, it's going to get too overgrown if I can't use the strings to prevent the uh, vines from growing too crazy. Yeah, I don't think it might grow too much. I'm going to have to really keep an eye on those vines. I need to find some glowberries. Okay, third floor we added some spruce rafters and some glowstone to help with lighting. 